got back from um, the beach like half an hour or so ago and I just am exhausted and <laughs> ready to go to bed but I wanted to um, do our little hill hilltop history thing here. Um, I am in my kitchen where it all began. My small itty bitty kitchen. This is just one half of it. Um, when Hilltop started, it was for a reason. Um, first, my it goes back to Ruby. So um, Ruby, my firstborn, was um, allergic to diaper rash um, cream and wipes, like uh, Pampers wipes. And we found out the hard way. Um, so like you bring your baby home from the hospital and you know how when you're breastfeeding they get like the runs all the time and so like you're constantly doing diaper changes. It's like 12 diapers a day. Um, so you know it's like that pee poop. So you're wiping and um, all of a sudden like four or five days into her being born you look at her bottom and she's just fire engine red. And the only things that we've used are diaper wipes and diapers. So um, immediately just stopped using the diaper wipes. Uh, we used uh, Kotex paper towels, or Kleenex paper towels, Viva. And then we just um, got them wet with water, and so that's what we used for her. And then um, because there was all kinds of weird preservatives in her diaper rash, uh, or in the paper towels, we um, I just used coconut oil to heal it because I also used uh, that Bordeaux butt paste that made her break out so it was just a hot mess so I just with her it was Viva paper towels and um, coconut oil so fast forward we make a decision to move to Michigan and I don't know we, pr we prayed about it for like two years and we just felt like God was calling us to move from Illinois to Michigan um, for just a ton of different reasons and so we decided to take the leap of faith. Um, we just prayed constantly that my husband would have work, and he's always had work. Um, and so we just we made that leap of faith, and we moved here. Um, Jack was nine months, and Ruby was like two. Um, so we move here, we move into our house, and we seriously um, had the worst move ever. We get here, we have struggle after struggle after struggle, and not just like small ones, like just shelling out like two, three grand at a time. All of a sudden you're just sick to your stomach and you're like, oh my gosh, why did we leave our comfort zone? We should go back. This is awful. It sucks. Um, in that meantime, got pregnant. Totally cried. Um, Nell's our surprise. <laughs> we were not planning on that. And um, so whatever, you deal with it, right? So it's the holidays. You got to start saving up for diapers so I get a job at World Market. Tons of complications in my pregnancy with Nell. Um, so um, well I was seasonal help they had to let me go and then when they invited me back I, I couldn't work there anymore because I couldn't um, do the, the things that they expected of me because of my complications. So I couldn't go back to work there. So now we were like four and a, four and a half months pregnant looking diapers in the eye when Dan and I moved, we sold every bit of our baby stuff, so we needed to start over, and we were just, like, stuck. So I started to pray, and I was just like, man, I don't know, what, how can I do this? Like, what can I do to participate? I'm, I have limitations. And I was going through an old file folder, like the kind where I had um, saved magazines and stuff like that. It was like, I wasn't really on Pinterest, so they were, like, actual um, magazine clippings and I um, found an old Martha Stewart magazine clipping about um, glycerin soap and just mixing herbs and easy things you can do and I was like whoa you know I used to I used to make soap like when I sold Willow House that's what I would give all my hostess and the guests I would give them pieces of my soap so I was like I don't know so my brain started clicking and um, I was knitting a lot at the time, and it was stuff I could do sitting down and didn't take a lot of effort, so I said to Dan, you know, I kind of have this idea for a business, what do you think? And I had gone grocery shopping that week, and I had $20 left over, 
um, from my uh, grocery money and I said, uh, you know, what do you think? Can I, what do you think about this? And the one thing he said was, whatever, like, just don't lose money. All right, cool. Don't lose money. I can do that, right? It's only 20 bucks. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I, um, I invested my $20 in supplies. And then I came home and I made a bar of soap that I had given to all my Willow House um, hosts. And I made that bar of soap and there were eight of them. And um, of my eight, my mom bought my first six. And then the other two I cut up and I sampled out. And after that, I took my earnings and I went back to Hobby Lobby and I bought more soap. And I uh, made two batches. And my mom bought more. And at that time, the people that I had given samples to were like, hey, I'll buy some of that too. I really liked it. So now you fast forward, and um, I'm, I was still pregnant at the time, so I was doing mostly um, glycerin soap, or the, yeah, the glycerin bars. So the gardeners go over well, and then my Aunt Kathy, she wanted the kitchen citrus soap, and so I, I invented that one because she wanted something citrus. And then I did the vanilla, um, and then Nell was born. And so we have Nell. And we take her home from the hospital, and oh my lands, allergic to all the same stuff Ruby was. Well, at this time, um, I had also been looking at beekeeping. I wanted to be a beekeeper, I thought. And so with Nell's issue to the diaper rash cream and the um, diaper wipes, I thought, well, hey, if I take the coconut oil, because I liked how that helped Ruby, um, and I add beeswax, it will, the wax will like create a barrier. So I was like, okay, cool, let's, let's do this. And so I made the balm and that's how that started. So after I started making the balm, of course my mom started loving it. And then I, because Nell was born, I started making um, my cold press soaps again with the lye. Cause I didn't know what lye would do when I was pregnant. Like if I was inhaling it and stuff, um, which is really not a big deal. I found out later. It's not like a, you don't like huff it, so it's not like it's a whatever. So, um, so yeah, so I started making the cold press soaps and my olive oil soap went over humongous and it just snowballed from there. So now I had like the balm, a bar of soap from a cold press soap and like five or six um, glycerin bars and I go into my first holiday season and it was amazing and springtime and I'm selling rugs. So springtime comes along and my Aunt Kathy is like, hey, you know, why don't you come to my house? Why don't you do a party? I, wanna, I want you to see, I want my friends to see what you're doing. And I'm like, man, I was so burnt out. I did, I did it. Like indirect sales, I was in it for two years um, before I got that world market job and let go. And I it ended so badly. I was like, I felt like I got burned and like, seriously, who wants to go to parties at people's houses where you spend like $60 and get one thing that sucks? Or you, they're like, Hey, you know, recruit, recruit, recruit. I'm like, no, I'm over it. I'm so over it. So I, I, I pushed my aunt off for a long time and I was like, I'm not ready for this Aunt Kathy. Well then finally my Aunt Kathy's like, no, I really want to, I really want to do this. So I'm like, all right, you know, like, well, fine, we'll just do it. So I had about $700 in inventory at my house and I took it all and I had some rugs and a huge rug I had just finished that I was really proud of. And I went there and I think my very first party, I... I'd have to look at the blog, but I want to say it was like $580 on that first day. And I was like, whoa, I don't even know these people and they're buying my soap. Because, you know, they people are starting to care what they're putting on their skin. And, and then I realized that my price points, which I already knew were pretty good, people were loving the price points too because it was, you know, something affordable. And they just went to a home party and they had fun and they didn't have to spend 60 bucks. So I left there and I was like, um, wow, maybe I have something. And I came home and I prayed about it and I was like, well, like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And I was like, well, maybe someone else want, want to join me. I don't know. And so two or three weeks later, I just prayed and prayed and I prayed and I said to Dan, what do you think? Like, what if I just threw this out there? What would happen? And so I did. And within two weeks of first advertising for a consultant position, um, a friend of a friend um, 
a, a friend <laughs> said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join this and jump on board. And then a couple weeks later, Lindsay jumped on board. And then a couple weeks later, we had a, a more consultants. And then within about, um, within about a month and a half, we went, it, so from August to October, we went to nine consultants. And on October 31st of our first year, I cut it off. Um, I, I wanted to limit the amount of consultants in our first year because I had no idea what this was going to be like. I didn't know the capabilities of these nine girls. I didn't know my capabilities. Hey, Lynn's <laughs> consultant number two. So um, I just was nervous because I'm like, oh my gosh, like, can we handle this? And so we went through our first holiday season and we did and we sold it all from Etsy. Um, so what the consultants had to do when they had parties is um, at checkout in the notes section, the customer would just list their names and then um, that was it. And it was okay and it went fine. And so when that January came around, um, I opened up the opportunity again and I think Kiana was our first consultant um, in that next year. And then it snowballed and we just kept rolling and rolling. And then you get to, I think... Um, yeah, so now we're here today. It's crazy. We have um, just, we have over, over 70 consultants total, um, but our active consultants are less than that. Um, to be active in our company, all it means is that you have sold something within, um, you know, a um, 60 day rolling period. So sometimes you might be active, sometimes you not you might not be but our average active consultants is sitting at about 50 right now we are just immensely blessed um, one of the prayers of my heart is that um, and I prayed it from the beginning that this is not only a blessing to our family but that this is a blessing for many families and that's why I think we seriously move mountains when mountains shouldn't be pushed because Oh, it's just insane when God is on your side, the things that can happen. Um, so we have been told, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You shouldn't do that. You're doing it wrong. If I had a dollar for every time someone said, you're doing it wrong. You shouldn't do it that way. That's weird. No one does it that way. We would have a new website because we're unusual. We're unique. Um, we don't have any investors. Literally, this company started with a $20 bill, and that's been invested and reinvested over and over and over and over. Um, we own the majority of our things. We took out a small loan for the website we have now. Um, when that gets paid off, then we'll start saving for our next website. Um, I truly believe God has called me in this business to run it um, as a good steward, and I just our family is in this 100%, um, but I know that financial things can be a stress in people's lives, and I don't want that stress. And I want this business to flourish, and I know it will without that kind of stress. And so that's why when as we grow, we're growing slowly in a way um, that um, is, is like in my heart and in my conscience. It's, it's part of what God wants for Hilltop, too. So we just continue to bless, bless um, play, blah, 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 pray blessings over each and every one of you. We pray blessings over our family and over this business and anyone who may use our products. We pray blessings for them um, too. When I'm in my kitchen some days, it's just awesome. You just go down there and it's quiet and you make soap and you make balm and like you just start praying for the consultants and you go down the list. And so that is how our company is built. That's the history. That's who we are. It's who I am. And this thing is just amazing, and we get to be a part of it. And I just thank each and every single one of you for taking time to learn how Hilltop started and how we're going to continue to function. So have a wonderful night. I'm off to bed.